Welcome to the on techniques of surface embellishment. In this unit, you will understand the different methods and techniques involved in surface embellishment. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review session. By the end of this unit, students will be able to list the materials and equipment required for hand embroidery, implement the different hand embroidery stitches and their variations. In the first module, you will learn about the materials and equipment required for hand embroidery. Tools and materials are the raw materials used in embroidery. A wide variety of tools and materials are available in the market, which is used for embroidery. They have to be selected wisely according to the type of embroidery. The materials that one selects for embroidery work has to chosen wisely as they affect its quality a great extent. The basic tools are embroidery threads, cotton threads, silk threads, fabric needles, scissors, trimmer, embroidery frames, threader, thimble and unpicker. We will now learn about each of these in detail. Embroidery threads are available in the form of small skeins in various colors and thickness and can also made up for different fibers. Depending on the requirement, single strands of threads are used or sometimes twisted and used as single thread. There are various kinds of cotton threads. Cotton threads where six strands of threads are loosely twisted together, one or two strands are separated from the ply and are used for the embroidery. Lustrous two ply threads that cannot be separated and these are used as such. Thick and matte finish five ply thread which are used for heavy fabric. Tightly twisted soft fine threads which less lustrous finish. Silk threads are available in the wide variety of colors the strands of which can be separated and used like the cotton threads. This must be dry cleaned and is comparatively difficult to work with. Fabric plays an important role in the quality of work. The fabric is selected according to the embroidery to be done. Embroidery needles are available in the market in different sizes and types. Different sizes are used in different types of embroidery. The type of needles are long eyed needles, round eyed needles, tapestry needles, poker. Scissors are used to cut the fabrics and trim threads. There are different types of scissors such as dressmaker scissors, small pointed scissors, pointed scissors. Trimmer is used to trim off excess threads for a neat finish. Embroidery frames are used to hold the fabric tight in place to facilitate embroidery. Frames can be wooden or plastic which are called the hoops. There are square and rectangle frames too. A threader is used to insert the thread through the eyelet of the needle. An unpicker is used to undo mistakes and take out stitches during embroidery. Other tools that are used are tracing paper, board pins, zigzag or pinging shears, glues or paste, ruler or pencils. Material used for embroidery are plastic and glass stones, crystals, sardozi, zari, kora, beads, sequins, pearls, precious and semi-precious stones, gota, plastic and glass mirrors, ribbons for ribbon embroidery. Embroidery is the art of working ornamental designs on items such as cloth and leather with decorative stitches. There are different kinds of embroidery which are known in variant names such as cut work, smoking and mirror work. It is essential to learn the basic stitches for successful embroidery work. In addition, you should acquire the ability to choose the right kind of stitches, designs and color combinations suited to the type of fabric and the purpose and the use the garment or article on which the embroidery is to be worked on. The first step in embroidery work is to transfer the design. After selecting the design for embroidery work, the making for the design should be transferred to the right side of the fabric or material on which the work is to be done without spoiling it. There are several ways of transferring the design. The simplest way is to buy an iron-on transfer available commercially. This has to be kept face down on the material and press with a hot iron. Before removing the paper, lift up the corner to make sure that the design has been transferred.
The most commonly used method of transferring the design is using a carbon paper. First trace the design on a tracing paper. Next keep the common papers with the waxed side facing the right side of the fabric. Keep the traced design over the carbon paper, pin the position and trace over it with a sharp pencil. In this case, the fabrics will not trace the marks easily. Drag the paper design onto the fabric and work small running stitches along the outline of the pattern, catching the cloth. Then tear off the paper so that the cloth is left with the stitched outline. In this module, you will learn to implement the different hand embroidery stitches and their variations. Embroidery is the art of decorating clothes and other materials with thread needle and different types of sh and shapes of beads, pearls, metal strips and other decorative materials. Embroidery is widely used in India or decoration of fabrics and other material. It is also used for decorations of dress materials such as saris, kurtas, caps, cushions and sofa covers, curtains, blankets as well as coats and shoes. Embroidery work is available in a wide range of colors, thread and other material. Various stitches are used in this work. Some of them are chain stitch, blanket stitch, buttonhole stitch, cross stitch and running stitch. India is a diversified country having a varied range of cultures and customs. Embroidery has played a prominent role in the tradition of India. The range of embroidery styles is closely linked to regional variations, both in material and in stitch types. For example, embroidery in Kashmir is often made with locally produced wood. Fine cotton muslin is used as a ground cloth for traditional embroidery of Bengal. These variations can be seen in the use of basic stitches as well. Some stitches like chain stitch may be found all over India, while other like interlacing home stitch may be from certain parts of Pakistan or Western India. But as a matter of fact, all the traditional embroidery types across India uses the basic hand embroidery stitches. They are used in specific patterns and designed to be give the final result. Kanta of Bengal uses the most basic running stitch, while Chikankari from Lucknow uses a variety of stitches and techniques to produce the unique intricate patterns. The Indian art and craft have become the world famous. There is huge demand of Indian embroidered garments. These are some of the important Indian embroidery techniques. We will now discuss the most popular Indian embroidery techniques and also applications of basic hand embroidery stitches for each method. Kanta Kanta is the traditional form of embroidery of West Bengal. It is a running style of stitch. This embroidery is done on many layers of cloth. It is done on quilts, bed sheets, blankets, sari, salwar suits, stalls and napkins. It is also known as Dorukha. This word means making worn out garments into a beautiful garment. Therefore, it is also known as recycling art. In earlier times, the worn out silk or muslin clothes were placed in piles and stitched together. It is believed that its date of origin lies during the era of Lord Buddha, when people used to drape themselves with the rags that were stitched together. The art is usually embroidery images of human beings, animals, flowers, geometrical designs and mythological figures. Generally, the work selects the figure of embroidery to which they relate to. There are different types of kanta that are done. They are Sujani kanta, Durjani kanta, Lep kanta, Archilata kanta, Rumal kanta, Or kanta. The state of Uttar Pradesh, especially the city of Lucknow, is considered to be the hub of chickenkari embroidery. Chickenkaris Chickenkari is derived from the Persian word chakin, means elegant patterns on the fabric. Earlier it was done with the white thread on muslin clothes. However, now it's being done in various types of fabrics like cotton, linen, nylon, georgette, chiffon and synthetic fabrics. Apart from wearable garment, it is also done on various other things such as curtains, 
bed sheets, table cloths, pillow covers and cushion covers. Nowadays it is not only done on white colored clothes but also fabrics of various colors but the thread used for the embroidery is generally white. Various motifs are embroidered through it like floral motifs which include flowers such as rose, lotus, jasmine and creepers. There are many types of stitches used to make beautiful chicken curry embroidery such as chain stitch, buttonhole stitch, french knots and running stitch. The most beautiful is the motif having design created in the form of net or jali all over the garment by generating thread tension. Shadow work. Shadow work is also done chicken embroidery which is done on the opposite side of the garment. This effect is created by working herringbone stitches on the wrong side of the cloth and only the shadow of the, these patterns is visible in the right side. There are three types of chicken curry stitches. Jali work. It is done in the form of net design spread all over the fabric. Flat stitches. The flat stitches are delicate and very fine stitch. It gives the look as if the embroidery itself the texture of the garment. Embossed stitch. Embossed stitches provide a beaded type of look to the garment. Sardosi. Sardosi work is an ancient form of embroidery basically done with a gold or silver sari threads. It is also known as metal embroidery although nowadays it is also done with colored metal threads. The word sardosi is derived from combining two words sar and dosi which in Persian language means gold and embroidery respectively. Therefore it is clear that this art of embroidery was originated in Persia which was brought into India by Mughals. Initially it was done with a real metal thread of gold and silver. It was done on clothes for the rich and royal wall hangings and bed sheets. In between the application of pearls and precious stones look stunning. Basically it is done on silk, crepe, brocade and velvet fabrics. Sardosi embroidery saw its decline during the reign of Aurangzeb. Sardosi work is an extension of Sari embroidery which is done with crochet hook. The embroidery done gives the appearance of chain stitch. The things required for doing Zardosi are beads, dapka, coiled wires and sequins. As Sardosi is done with a coiled metal wires studded with stones, beads etc. It's heavy weight. Therefore, it is done on fabrics that are thick and heavy such as silk, velvet, satin and crepe. Thus, the choice of fabric is also royal and expensive. The design to be done is first traced on the fabric then spread on the wooden frame. Further, the embroidery is done by picking up the, a single thread in, in the needle and sewing it into the cloth. This art requires patience and it's quite complicated. It is also expensive. Earlier Sardosi was done on wearable garments and bedspreads mainly for royal families. But now it is within the reach of common people. Clothes with Sardosi are an integral part of any wedding or important function as it depicts royalty. Apart from wearable garments, Sardosi is also done on cushion covers, table clothes, wall hangings and fabric purses. Kasuti. Kasuti embroidery is a traditional form of embroidery design practiced in the state of Karnataka. Usually the embroidery is done over Ilkal and Kanjivaram saris. It includes designing meticulous patterns like Gopura, chariot, lamps and conch shells. This embroidery works involves hard labor and microscopic eyes for it required counting to of each thread individually. The patterns are stitched without any knots to make sure that the both sides of the clothes look identical. Different vari varieties of stitches are employed. Some of them are Ganti, Murgi, Neig and Mente. The Kasuti work. The Kasuti work however lacks patronage in the age of machines. It is preferred by the native of Karnataka. 
The material on which the embroidery is executed is a hand woven cloth of dark color, usually black. The sarees known as ilkal sarees have white silk pallu and border. The main fabric being thick soft cotton. Largest and the most closely spaced motifs are placed near the pallu. As the embroider moves towards the main part of the sari, the motifs become smaller and more scattered. Finally, they fade away gracefully with clusters of stars or mere dots. The most frequently used colors are red, purple, green, orange and crimson. Patterns in only or one or two colors are rare. The usual colors combinations are orange, green and crimson or purple. Green, orange and red the brighter shades of these being preferred. The Kasuti embroidery is done in silk which earlier was unpicked from the tassels pendant from the pallu. Later it, it was available commercially. The basic embroidery stitches used in Kasuti work are the back stitch, running stitch, cross stitch and zigzag running stitch. In certain work, the overall effect is woven design rather than of embroidery. Kasuti stitches are horizontal, vertical or diagonal. These are used going in one direction, the design being completed on the return journey of the filling in the back portion of the running stitch. The Kasuti workers use no help such as drawing out threads or tracing the motifs to help set the pattern. The Kasuti pattern is in the mind and the, is built up with just the needle moving in the different directions. In Kur, the basic stitches used are cross and double running stitch. The basic design is done in cross stitch but the static quality of cross stitch is relieved by working the projection in the running stitch. Here also the motif combined religion, nature and articles of daily use. Kashmiri embroidery. Kashmiri embroidery also known as Kashida is as colorful and as beautiful as Kashmir itself. Embroiders often draw inspiration from nature, birds, blossoms and flowers, creepers, chinar leaves, gobi, mangoes, lotus and trees are the most common themes. The entire pattern uses one or two embroidery stitches. Kashida is primarily done on canvas with crystal threads, but Kashida also employs pashmina and leather threads. Patterns and color schemes are magnificently employed in Kashida by the craftsman with a mood aligned to the spirit of nature. Commercial items include bedspreads, sofa and floor cushions and pillow covers. This embroidery is revealed in shawls and in cottage industry done by the members of families in Srinagar. Kashmiri embroidery is practiced by men and it's essentially a commercial craft. The base cloth whether wool or cotton is generally white or cream or a similar shade. Pastel colors are also often used. The craftsmen use shades that blends with the background. Thread colors are inspired by local flowers. Only one or two stitches are employed on the fabric. The motifs are mainly taken from nature. Animal and human figures are not seen in the embroidery. Birds motifs such as parrots, woodpeakers and kingfishers are seen on the shawls. Floral motifs like lily, lotus, iris, saffron, flowers and tulips are mostly seen on the shawls. Other designs like grapes, cherries, almonds and apples are favorites. The chinar leaf is considered an important motif. Simple stitches such as satin stitch, stem stitch and chain stitch are used. Cruel embroidery is done with the use of the hook. Kashida is a general term of Kashmir embroidery, which includes other stitches such as salakado, chain stitch, vada chik, buttonhole stitch and talibar, gold work. One outstanding feature of the embroidery is the 
fact that it is made with a single thread given a flat formalized appearance to the design. The chain stitch has been adopted to cover large surfaces without pulling the cloth. It has become the variation of long and short stitch. Chain stitch is used only in inferior places and never on expensive piece of work. Kashmiri workman has made himself adapt the art of displaying fineness on both sides of the fabric. This embroidery is done on silk, cotton and wool fabrics. Colorful fabrics such as white, green, purple, blue, yellow and black are used. The threads used are wool, cotton and silk. Fulkari embroidery. Fulkari embroidery technique from Punjab region divided between India and Pakistan. It literally means flower working which was at one time used as the word for embroidery. In time the word Fulkari became restricted to embroidered shawls and headscarves. The word Ful means flower and Kari means craft. Thus its names literally means flower work or floral craft. Simple and sparsely embroidered Odini head scarves, dupatta and shawls made for everyday use are called fulkaris. Garments that cover the entire body made for special and ceremonial occasions like wedding and birth of a son is called bakes, garden. Scattered work on the fabric is called adhabag, half garden. This whole work is done with white or yellow silk flaws on cotton khadav. Fulkari is considered as an important part of ceremony and ceremonies in Punjab. Each of the important ceremonies connected with marriage is associated with wearing a particular type of bhag. Khadar cloth which was hand spun and hand woven cotton material is always used for embroidery. The color is mostly red, white, blue or black. The thread used is pure silk. It is untwisted silk floss called pat. Golden yellow, green, white, crimson, red and orange are the five colors prepared in selected silk floss for fulkari work. The motifs are made up of horizontal, vertical and diagonal stitches, producing geometrical patterns in fulkari designs. The bhag has an overall geometrical floral pattern. The stitch craft of fulkari it is a unique method of embroidery in that it is worked entirely on the wrong side of the cloth and the pattern takes shapes on the right side. The design is neither drawn or traced. There are many types of fulkari. The chop and sabha, salu, tilpatra and nilak. These are wedding fulkari presented to the bride by her maternal relations during the marriage ceremony. The plain red or dark red khadar shawl known as salu is used for daily household wear. Tilpara shawls have very little embroidery and are in inferior quality khadar. Nilak is worked on black or navy blue khadar with yellow and crimson red pad. Kachwak. Kachwak embroidery also known as Kachi embroidery is one of the most easily identifiable style of embroidery from Gujarat and a well patronized handicraft textiles in India. It derives its name from the places of origin the Kach and Saurashtra regions of Gujarat. Kach embroidery is characterized by the use of vibrant colors, mirrors and beads and intricate and extensive needlework usually done on cotton or silk fabric. Kachwork embroidery involves the use of silk or woolen thread in fine stitches to create elaborate patterns. It draws its inspiration from romantic architectural human motifs as well as Persian and Mughal arts. A popular and recognized example of Kutch embroidery is the Gagra Choli, a traditional skirt and blouse 
ensemble of Gujarat, especially worn during the Navratri season. This is a type of embroidery from the Indian state of Gujarat and is especially popular in Kutch and Puj regions. The embroidery of this region is bright, bold and colourful, perhaps to beat the mood of the dry desert land. Mirrors, beads and tassels are liberally used making the embroidered very rich yet not gaudy. Threads and fabrics traditionally used are cotton and silk. These days, however, cotton fabrics and threads are favoured. Some of the stitches used are chain, double buttonhole, interlacing, running, stem and herringbone. The southern part of Tamil Nadu are surrounded by very beautiful Nilgiri hills. Within these hills lives a tribal community called Toda. They are experts in embroidery called Toda, which is world famous. It is a distinct style of embroidery locally called Pugur, which means flower. This fine and intricate embroidery is done by the tribal men and women on shawls. The shawl adorned with the Toda embroidery is called Putukuli. This particular shawl has alternate red and black stripes at a gap of 6 inches. The embroidery is done on the stripes of red and black color. Motifs are worked by counting the threads. The embroidery is done on the stripes of red and black color. Motifs are worked by counting the threads. The embroidery is so fine that it looks like weaving. Embroidery is reversible and Toda uses the rougher underside of the fabric as the right side. This embroidery is carried from one generation to another generation. The embroidery is basically on cotton fabric by counting the thread by thread. These are the various facts of this embroidery. Cotton fabric is used for Toda embroidery. The fabric should be loosely woven because the embroidery is done by counting the weaves. The color of the ground fabric is off-white. The colors of the threads are red and black. Basically, all traditional embroidery by inspiration is taken from nature, day-to-day -day life activities, mythological stories and reflects the colors of flora and fauna of the particular region. The embroidery of a particular region tells the story of a particular region. In this case, also the motifs are inspired by the local surroundings. Buffalo horn is most important motif because the tribes worship the buffalo. The other popular motifs are the sun, moon, stars, flowers, snakes and rabbits. Along with the famous Toda shawls, various other items made from this embroidery are traditional drapes, putukulis, dupattas, tables, cloths, stalls, kurtis, pyjamas, skirts, pants and salwar kurta. To sum up, embroidery is basically an expression of beauty, aesthetics which an artist portrays with a needle and thread. This tribal embroidery of Tamil Nadu is very distinctive and it should be preserved as this embroidery is dying. We should use this embroidery in different articles such as purse, pouch and retail in it the international and national market. Kati Bharat or Katyapa. This is a style of embroidery with long stitches and embossed designs executed all over the fabric in a playful manner. It brings out the joyful pleasure of fabrication experienced by the creator. Geometric patterns engulfed between borders constructing checkered forms illustrated by linear long stitches and contrasting colors define the designs of Kati Bharat. Repeating patterns of 6 to 8 pointed stars, triangles and squares with a glittering mirrors adds in aesthetics. Design patterns are emphasized by the use of elongated drawn stitches along with herringbone stitches that define the borders of outline. The stitches in triangles run in parallel to the warp and weft. 
This creates an interesting play of light and shade with a single color of yarn or thread. Abla or mirrors are inserted with buttonhole stitches amid squares and triangles. They harmonize the curves and even lines. Narrative and figurative elements like humans, animals and birds along with landscapes also form an essential part of this style of embroidery. Katiapa style of embroidery is also locally known as here from the fossi silk yarn under the creation. Bold motifs adorn in rich contrasting colors insert with mirrors create a colorful depiction. This is done in dark blue, orange, purple, indigo, black, deep red with little hints of yellow and green. The traditional attire of Kathi woman flaunt this style and have become the important part of costumes worn by both rural and urban women during Navratri. Besides the garment, Katepa Bharat is also used in creating a range of home adorning textiles like chalkas, torans or textile door frames, cushion covers and mats. Banjara Embroidery Banjara embroidery and needlework has been derived from the gypsies and nomads of Telangana. This form of embroidery is basically a local art from the tribes of Banjaras living in Telangana. Colorful, vibrant and live are the words synonymous with this embroidery. The colorful lifestyle of the Banjaras residing in this state is displayed through their high spirited clothes. The embroidery by, done by Kutch Banjaras and Gujarat Banjaras is slightly different. This embroidery is unique in its style and a matchless quality has been achieved by using brightest and originality. The intricate embroidery done as part of this art from involves a lot of geometrical combinations using squares diamonds and triangles. Colorful threads are used in the embroidery that reflects the vibrant lifestyle of Banjaras. The embellish an article. They also make use of shells, beads and mirrors. Mirrors are extensively used in Banjara embroidery and this is the distinctive feature of this art form. The sunlight reflects through the mirrors accentuate the beauty of this work. A cornucopia of design and figures are created using simple stitches such as herringbone, chain stitch, short and long stitch. A wide array of articles are made using this embroidery such as bags, dress sets for women and girls, cushion covers, skirts, blouse pieces, kurtas, household furnishings and bedspreads. Benjara embroidery is known for its vibrancy in colors and use of articles like coins, cover shells, beads, mirrors, cotton and many other as embellishments. The textiles embroidered by hem simply look stunning. Andhra Pradesh women wear gorgeous cholis, gagras and odnis with bold mirror and applique work. In adjoining states, the similar embroidery work is done in a more subtle manner and the use of embellishments is slightly less than Andhra Pradesh. The beautiful sequence and rectangle work embroidered using stem and cross stitch is carried out in Maharashtra and Nimar and Ma Malwas districts of Madhya Pradesh. They also use herringbones stitching closely together among a grid. Angularly geometrical designs are created on the textiles. Tassel dremels are mostly embroidered and then edged with mirrors or coveries. Other articles are batua or purse, woman clothes like odinis, cholis and gagras. The embroidery is usually done of a blue or brown colored cloth that are quilted. In this way, the color contrast is easily seen and moreover the embroidery comes out beautifully. Sometimes quilting stitches are used in patterning the in which cotton threads are used to create unusual geometric patterns. Sometimes cotton or woolen threads is used to create intricate embroidery. Besides 
purses, bags and clothes. A head ring is also embroidered using unique stitches. Charming and vivid Rabri Bharat uses creatively and imagination executed on any piece of textiles. The spontaneous compositions, vibrant colors and graphical motifs add to the fashion products. While amazing spirit and vigor in lifestyle accessories. Symmetrical and asymmetrical motifs conceptualized based on the surrounding area. Reflects verbs and pleasure in creation. This symbolizes their wandering leaves. Rabbery embroidery consists of square, triangle, rectangle or circular patterns. These composes to form abstract motifs of birds and animals, flowers and fruits, landscapes and seascapes, insects and reptiles. Linear abstraction filled in with intricate stitches and mirrors are simply created. They reflect the observant and exceptional nature of Rabri woman. Chain stitch accompanied by an array of accent stitches adds to the graphically illustrative quality in their needlework. Bright and vibrant color palettes is used on the contrasting background of white or black. With a sparkling mirror, it is easily distinguished with other works in this region. One of the most distinctive characteristics of Rabri embroidery is the contrasting and non-repeating use of colors. Earlier, the term Rabri was loosely applied to migratory camel he heads having similar customs and beliefs. Sub-communities of Rabris have their own legends of origin. While some call themselves the ancestral keepers of Shiva's camels, others seem to have migrated in the recent past on account of Islamic invasions from the north. Due to their knowledge of the terrain, they were often entrusted with the task of transporting goods, trade, materials and even people. Each community and culturally linked group in Gujarat is distinctively identified by the kind of embroidered customing, body tattoos and living settlements. Rabri embroidery is uniquely suited to the lifestyle and young girl is initiated to the craft from the her mother. This is a session to show you few embroidery stitches. So the basic things you need are embroidery frames, a piece of cloth, a needle and a thread, scissors. Before you start, thread the needle, whichever color you want. So how to thread is like you should thread the needle so that the one end is free and the other end you tie a knot. Fix the frame. Stretch the fabric. Now fix the frame. Stretch the fabric. Take the needle and thread. The basic stitch is running stitch. Insert the needle from bottom of the fabric. The next stitch is back stitch. Come up. For the running, we move to the front. For the back stitch, I, I do a running stitch. Then instead of go the second stitch, instead of going into the front, move it to the back to the end point of the first stitch similarly 
with equal distance end stitch or end point of the second stitch point of the third stitch the next stitch is blanket stitch make a 7 shape again parallel to it make it put it down and make the needle to come up make the thread below The next stitch is chevron stitch, come up on the first point, take it down, in the middle of the line make another stitch, that is the third point. make a slanting stitch come up on left that is a fifth point again in the middle of this line come up end the stitch by another slanting stitch again repeat the same Make a slanting stitch. Move towards left.
the next stitch is couching for that you need two colors threaded in different needle take the first color now hold this thread with your thumb take the other color need thread couch the green color thread The next stitch is cross stitch. Come up, give a slanting stitch, then come down. Take it here, come down, come up here, give a cross. Similarly, The next stitch is feather stitch. Come up, hold the thread with the thumb, parallel to it, make a hook, make come come down, then take a needle again, put this thread below the needle. pull down again parallel to it again parallel to this This is a feather stitch. The next stitch is French knot. Now take the thread, wind it on the needle two to three times, pull it down. you get a raised effect the next stitch we are going to do is cross herringbone for that we are drawing a petal The next stitch we are going to do is cross herringbone. For that, draw a petal motif. Now 
now take along the edge of it to the starting point now take half of it towards the starting point similarly move take half of it this from back you can see the running stitch going the front it is cross herring bone now take the threaded needle take it below the frame insert it pull it out so the basic stitch is running stitch so take a few like about uh, one one eighth of an inch take it pull it down again insert with equal distance tie the back for the next stitch take a different color this the, the stitch is known as interlacing or whipped running take it from beneath insert through the running stitch we have done without passing through the fabric The next stitch we are going to do is chain stitch. For that, take the needle and thread bin under the. Three, two, one. The next stitch we are going to do is laced stitch. For that, take a threaded needle, do normal running stitch.
Now make a knot at the back. Take a different color needle, thread. Take it from beneath. Form loops without touching the fabric through the running stitches we have done. Don't tighten it, tighten up the loops, loops. Now end the stitch. Tie an out of the back. The next stitch we are going to do is chain stitch, again come up, keep the needle like this, take a few and put the thread below the needle, make a chain, make a loop, then pull it out. Again, to end The next stitch is magic chain. For that, thread the, thread the uh, needle with two colors, like two threads of one color and two threads of another color. Here I have used green and orange. Come up. Take one color thread, 
use a needle to separate the threads The next stitch we are going to do is magic chain or advanced chain. For this, you have to thread the needle with two colors of two colors. Like here, I have used two threads of green and two threads of orange. Now, come up, and here you have to separate the threads into two colors. That is, I am taking orange for the first chain. Take a different another needle to separate out the colors. Like we did for chain, make it take a take few and loop the needle with orange color thread. Pull it out. Next, take green color thread, pull it out. So, alternatively, now take orange color. the stitch the next stitch we are going to do is pekini stitch for that do a running stitch Take a different color thread. Form loops. Take this into the second stitch. Then pass through first stitch. Again to the third, pass through the second. Now we are going to do Pekini stitch. For that, take a threaded needle, do running stitches.
to end it, tie a knot at the back. Take a different color thread. Now move through these running stitches without touching the fabric and make a loop. Make a knot at the back. For the first stitch, take a threaded needle, take it beneath the frame, pull it out. This stitch is known as running stitch. Insert the needle again, take it out again with equal distance. Now to end the stitch, tie a knot at the back. The second stitch is whipped running or interlacing. For that take a different color thread. Insert from beneath, pass through the running stitch, done, without passing through the fabric. Next stitch we are going to do is satin stitch. For that draw a triangle, take a needle, start from one of its corners, then very carefully Take the next stitch very near to the first stitch. Come down. 
again very close to the second stitch done continue doing this till you get a raised effect the next stitch we are going to do is seed stitch for that thread the needle come down again near to it do another stitch so this is a seed stitch tie knot at the back the next stitch is split stitch come up do a running stitch then split the two threads take the needle through the splitted running then do the next running stitch similarly take the needle next stitch is star stitch for that make an outline like this to the center again take it down to the center The next which stitch we are going to do is stem stitch. For that, take a threaded needle, take it from beneath the frame, put it back. For running, we took it in the front. For the stem stitch, take it back, pull it down. again take the needle from half of the stitch we have done come up
tightly slam the stitch again half of it Now we are going to do stem stitch. Take a threaded needle, come up, always move left to right. So take a slanting stitch from left to right. Now take half of it. Take a next slanting stitch left to right. Again, half of it. Another slanting stitch. tie a knot at the back. The next stitch we are going to do is pekini stitch for that. Again take a threaded needle, do a running stitch. The next stitch is upright cross stitch. Make a straight line. Make a plus sign.
boolean not now wind this thread onto the needle push back the needle into the same position similarly again fly stitch make sure that you don't pull it too tight now take your needle making a triangle position go through the stitch we can make a loop pull it down till it make a v shape then do a normal stitch again make sure that you don't pull it you don't pull it completely again make a triangle shape lazy daisy This stitch is similar to chain stitch. Push back your needle on the same spot. Move out. Make a loop. then give a ending stitch make a loop give an ending stitch long and short give a normal stitch now do a smaller stitch very adjacent to it exactly half continue doing long short long short
you can do this with shaded thread so that it gives an effect padded satin for this make a petal shape fill the shape with chain stitch you can do either running stitch or any other stitch most preferably you can do chain stitch to give a padded satin effect Keep on filling the petal with chain stitch. So this is the filled petal. Now push back your needle and tie a knot at the back. So this is the filled petal. Now take a thread of same color and start doing uh, satin stitch. Continue doing this till the petal is filled. So continue doing satin stitch. So you can see you get a padded effect over here. It's a raised satin stitch whipped running 
do a running stitch with equal distance Take a different color thread. Take it up from the first point of the running stitch done. Without touching the fabric, move, in, move through these running stitches. The stitch is whipped running. For this you have to do running stitch of equal distance. Now take a different color thread, start from the starting point of the running stitch. Pass through the running stitches done without going into the fabric. end at the end of the running stitch. Take your needle back and tie it. You have come to the end of this unit. In this unit you have learned about the materials and equipment required for hand embroidery. You have also learned about the various hand embroidery stitches and how to implement these into your work. Thank you.